This is the Criterion Creeps Podcast, and we're talking about Pygmalion from 1938, directed by Anthony Asquith and Leslie Howard. Uh, from Letterboxd, the uh, tagline for this movie, he picked up a girl from the gutter and changed her into a glamorous society but butterfly. See Wendy Hiller, new star discovery, in this amazing role. And the uh, in-depth synopsis, as always, from Letterboxd, <laughs> Henry Higgins is an upper-class phonetics professor who encounters low-class gutter snipe Eliza Doolittle and bets his friend, Colonel Pickering, that he can pass her off as a duchess within three months. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's it. That's the whole thing. Pretty informative, if you ask me. Yeah, it lays it out. Um, mm-hmm. So, RJ, uh, last week, Yo. I think I said, hey, we're watching something called Pygmalion this uh, <laughs> next week, whatever that means. I kind of knew what it was because there's been so many iterations of this story uh, over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if I've really seen any of them exactly. Uh, I just kind of know that they're out there. Uh, such films as Pretty Woman uh, mm-hmm. one, being one of those. Uh, and most recently, The Duff. And yeah. uh, one the one film that I did watch that uh, basically is a straight-up remake of it is uh, My Fair Lady, mm-hmm. which I suffered through for all of us. Um, so Well, you, you may have suffered through My Fair Lady, but I watched Pretty Woman and She's All That. <laughs> So who's yeah. really coming out here? Well, RJ, uh, to begin with, uh, so this movie is uh, an adaptation of a play written by one Bernard Shaw, uh, written mm-hmm. in 1912. Uh, I guess it's like his most popular play, um, and it's like seems to like capture a lot of his style, particularly the dialogue and the way he writes characters. Yeah. Uh, fun fact right off the bat when this movie started up is a uh, old, old pal of the Criterion Creeps, David Lean, was an editor oh. on this. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. So this is him cutting his teeth, uh, making movies before he went yeah. on to do it himself. Nice. Um, the description of this describing like the mythology of Pygmalion mm-hmm. uh, about uh, a man who makes a sculpture and wants it to come to life. Uh, it all sounded like real doll stuff to me. Um Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of my first notes here is, well, this is certainly British. Yes, it is. And uh, so I, at the very beginning of this movie, I was kind of like, oh, no, this isn't, this isn't going to play out well. Because I remember my, uh, my memories of Great Expectations and, like, mm-hmm. some of the other uh, movies of this era, like your 39 Steps and whatnot. And I was like, oh, yeah. it's going to be another one of these, is it? But then we get, and then we start getting some really like interesting turns of phrases, like uh, uh, squashed cabbage leaf, which I uh-huh. was like, huh, that's pretty neat, and uh, draggle tailed gutter snipe, and I was <laughs> like, whoa, 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 <laughs> what, 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 what is going on like, here? <laughs> what's all this now? Yeah, what's with all this fancy talk? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, just as a uh, overview, uh, I I think this movie's great. I, I like this movie a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was like super watchable. Uh, I love the, the, I like the performances. I like the character dynamics. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like the, 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 the dialogue is just like super solid. It's very like play-like. Like it, it, it definitely felt like an adaptation mm-hmm. of a play. And I was like reading the a description of the actual play itself, which is five acts. And it's very simple compared to the movie because mm-hmm. obviously when you're making a movie you should like uh go a little bit further and like have some bridging sequences just because you can now because you're not like <clears throat> locked onto a stage uh but yeah uh i don't know i thought this movie was kind of terrific and like i'm kind of glad this is one of those occasions where i'm like i'm really glad we're doing this whole criterion creep project because i would never go to my way to watch this movie because it seems like no one really talks about it and Mm -hmm. uh it just sort of exists in this weird place like anthony asquith is like a director who like nobody really talks up too much um he has this other movie that's a silent film that i actually want to watch pretty soon called underground that's apparently also really good um and leslie howard who uh co-directed this and also is the star playing uh, Mm -hmm. henry higgins uh i've seen him in a couple things at this point uh like gone gone with the wind and stuff like that but i wasn't really familiar with him but uh i he's awesome in this like Mm -hmm. he's he is great um 
I think uh, Wendy Hiller, like the transformation of her, like from the beginning of this movie to the end is like very well done. This like really got underlined to me after watching My Fair Lady, which is just like, oh, Audrey Hepburn is like uh, supposed to be like a dirty bum girl. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just to break in there, that's like She's All That, Mm. where uh, (laughs) Rachel A. Cook, uh, you see her and you're like, this this lady is like better looking than 99% of the people in this movie, even (laughs) when they're trying to make her like... They have her with the overalls and, like, the sweaty hair. You're like, she still looks better than everyone in this movie. Yeah. But they're like, oh, look how gross she is. And then, like, uh, in Pretty Woman, Julia Roberts doesn't change at all. <laughs> but I guess it's, like, it's supposed to be your perspective changes on the fact that she's, like, a dirty hooker in the start. Yeah. And then by the end of it, you're like, no, it's okay. It's okay to fall in love with a dirty hooker. Mm-hmm. So uh, we can talk about that more later. Uh, I just wanted to... Since you were talking about mm-hmm. progression and evolution of character within mm-hmm. frames, uh, I wanted to add, I wanted to add that you can't see listening, but I'm doing hand motions, and Jarrett just yeah. got like Whoa. woke. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very uh, Trump-like these uh, hand yeah. gestures. Yeah, <laughs> they're like real high elbows, and it's like Ugh, like yeah. jabby. Okay, yeah, yeah. anyways, okay. continue. A- anyways, so yeah, no, uh, I don't know. They're... I don't know. This is like, I think I just was when I was talking about uh, watching Mother, because actually yep. Mother is kind of not that far off from the Pygmalion story. Um, oh. and, and, and there's like, and there's a writer like when I was talking about like, uh, like one of my like favorite genres, I guess, of like theater is like kind of like mm-hmm. mean, mean, cruel, like kind of like dramas with characters that are like, like ridiculously cruel to one another. Or yeah. like, so like this is like fits totally into that. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's like kind of like the uh, there's like the movie Carnage, which actually I remember, I, I saw that you yep. did not like that movie on Letterbox. Did I give it a bad rating? You, you did, and I was like, that movie's uh, pretty good. So anyway, I think that's that's neither here nor there in yep. terms of what we're talking about here. But anyway, so yeah, uh, I love I love that stuff, and so like I didn't realize like I've I've never seen a Bernard Shaw play or like wasn't not really familiar with him. Mm-hmm. So watching this, I was like really pleasantly surprised that this was the sort of thing because it's like. Um, Henry Higgins is very much like he's like a young Mr. Burns, <laughs> like is the yeah. way I would best describe yeah. it. Like just like the way he snipes at people and his plans. And like there's even like another like uh, kind of Pygmalion type of thing is the movie Trading Places. <laughs> oh, which, yeah. One we, of my favorites. Yeah. Which is also a movie about like two men like making a bet and, mm-hmm. um, and and just like the transformation of that and like up taking somebody from the poor and uplifting them. Um, so. Yeah. yeah, that's that's some straight Pygmalion shit right yeah, there. Yeah, there's another one. It's all over the place. Yeah. There, uh, there's lots. Yeah. So hey, RJ. Uh, before I continue yep. on, uh, what did what did you think of this movie? It's one of the worst movies we've ever watched. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, this movie is really good. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, it is a really well made movie. Yeah. Which uh, I think is like the biggest thing for this. Because when did you say this came out? 38 or something? Yeah. 1938. Uh, two, uh, this... Before Citizen Kane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this movie is so well put together and like. Um, Gra- like hold your attention so much better than movies that come out now are and it's like there's no reason that movies that come out now can't be well made it's like oh, i don't have any money it's like you think these motherfuckers in 1938 had any money well they probably did but um my point i guess was uh yeah it's it's really well made it looks great um the actors are really good uh like girlfriend uh she's wicked good uh from her gutter snipe mouth at the start wendy hiller yes <laughs> yeah she, she I, I don't know names that's i don't good. do that's, that that's what uh, i'm here she, for she's great uh also the callous cold professor uh that guy is super fucking Le- good oh, leslie howard is like oh, man like when because I... yeah what you said like how mean he is and like just like matter of factly too where he's just like i don't like he doesn't realize that he's just being so horrible to people and you're just like yeah nice Nice. No. Uh, he's really good. That guy yeah. is aw- – and together they were really good too. But I almost just liked when they were um, – the scenes where they were just on their own almost. Right. Or because I think like he has a lot of scenes where he's just kind of like talking out loud. Yeah. Uh, and like that stuff is really, really good. And uh, she has a, like a lot of the scenes with her is where 
<clears throat> I guess she's like speaking to him or speaking to the other one, but what you see is just her doing it. Right. And that's all really good. Uh, it's got, this movie has some fancy ass editing, uh, mm-hmm. which apparently you said, Mr. David lean was yeah. involved in this. Uh, it, it looks great, man, for, uh, the era it came out. Like you got some of that nice, uh, overlapping images where it's like one thing flies from one direction and it's like, it's like spinning newspaper type stuff. Right. Where it's like images crossing. Uh, that looks well, really yeah, good. Yeah, because there's the uh, the science montage. Oh, man. I wrote <laughs> down uh, dope-ass science shit with yeah. the exclamation. Science. Because um, that stuff was all really cool. Uh, the f- um, What is it? Uh, phenon- phonetics? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like all that stuff. Like he, I love that he has like a giant ear in his office and the creepy <laughs> Asian doll thing with the tongue that, that, that thing is creepy but uh, <laughs> I just think it's I think it's so funny that like he's play they play it so to type it's like this guy studies languages so of course he'd have a giant ear in his office yeah. but, uh, uh, th- but I think okay uh, before we get through that scene there's like uh, be- so there's like the whole opening shot of that movie where it's like they're all waiting outside of like the hall and they're all waiting for yeah. it's raining um and uh, just like the weird like thing with him like lurking around pillars, and you're like, you really don't know exactly. Like, I had no idea what he was. What he's doing? Like, I have no yeah. idea. I'm like, what the hell is this? And then people start freaking out. There's this guy taking notes, and it's like, oh, nowadays people would just be on their smartphones, and like this guy would just be wandering around recording mm-hmm. them and being a, a regular old creep. So um, he's like, he's like one of us. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then the movie well, that, kind of, yeah, and, yeah, and it goes there. But then we get the hilariousness of like, oh, the two language experts, uh, they just happen to meet completely by coincidence on the main street. Yeah, like, I was gonna come see you, and you're here. <laughs> and they shake. I thought that was like super funny. Uh, yep. it's like ah, movies. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I liked it. It's like you said. It's you never doubt it. You're like, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, whereas like when I was talking about earlier, other movies I watched this week where teams come together, and you're just like, me. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, no, that's really funny. Um, this movie has a lot of like charm like that, where it's, uh, that old style kind of stuff mm-hmm. like, uh, debutones and the balls. And, um, I like the British like etiquette type things where you see like the housekeeper trying to correct the guy and stuff like that. Right. I like stuff like that. It's, it's got a charm to it. Um, they also have like, the biggest fucking coffee cup you have ever seen ever in this movie <laughs> when they serve <laughs> each other that. coffee. It's like an entire like mixing bowl with mm. just a little handle on it. I thought that was really funny. Uh, wh- what else are we talking about here? Mm, science was pretty cool. I like uh, the talk of Hungarian royal blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that. That was, that was good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. This movie in general, I think, has some pretty cool like ideas and themes. Where it, it seemed like there, there's like this banality to the the upper class kind of stuff. Where even like the etiquette things, which I know I just said, I I think that stuff's cool. But uh, they they go to all this trouble to raise this girl or like to try to teach her all these things. And then you kind of see when she goes to that uh, ball or whatever, and you see how these people are interacting with each other. And it seems like a lot of, uh, like a lot of them, it's just like, not like formalities, but like they do it so, so much already that a lot of it gets lost. And it's like, what's the point of it? Any anyways, Uh, actually a good example is when he takes, uh, he takes her to his mother's for tea and uh, everyone's just stirring their cups. Oh man, that, that scene is like so money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like everyone's stirring their cups and like, she kind of looks over and she's like, Oh, I guess I should stir my cup. But like, even like the semi slow guy beside her, he's just doing it. He's like, he's like, is everyone doing this? I'll just do this too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know what I mean? When I, when I'm talking about this stuff, it's like, there's these things that all these people do. And it's like, what's really the meaning here? What's the point? And it's like, a lot of these people just do this stuff anyways, because, it's kind of like yes, uh, just, as discussed in last week's episode, Good Morning, where people yep. kind of like do things because, but mm-hmm. it's they're, they're, they, have, they have different ends. Whereas this movie, I think, is like kind of a, a challenge too, because I mean, Brit Britain has like has has its history of like the caste system essentially. <laughs> like, but yeah. I mean, it wasn't a caste yeah. system; it was a class system, and just like like there are those things are like 
I think still even happening now today, uh, even though it's like more irrelevant than ever. Um, yep. or should be, but yeah, like it's very, um, Hmm. What would you put it? Like, cause I'm not sure nope. what, what the movie is supposed to be like, what it's trying to say. Cause like, cause even like, yep. cause like Henry Higgins, like I think he views himself as above everything. That's like mm-hmm. sort of his goal. It's like to show, look, I could I could take any I could take anybody around and I could show them how to be like exactly like them and they wouldn't even know because they're idiots because they're not as smart as me. Yep. And like even though he himself falls into the trappings, but he just mm-hmm. but he wants to be able to kind of like he wants to be above it all. He wants to like always be above it, but at the same time he has he falls into the, the those trappings. Right. Yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Uh, I think the big takeaway from this movie is uh, that to quote the Matrix, mm. uh, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> uh, because it's like when she was like the gutter person, the Dragle Tail, yep. she's just like kind of happy with her life, or like not like not Con- unhappy with content. her life. She's content. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like once she becomes a proper lady, she's she's like real sad and she's like lonely and she's. There, there's all these things where it's like, well, you don't understand, and she's like, I, I have all this knowledge it's, now. It's kind of like uh, Flowers for Aldron, which is like, yeah, uh, yeah, which, yeah. Because there's like that terrifying bit where like he realizes he's not going to be smart anymore, and it's like yep. that reversal, and you're going to be cast back, and you won't even know. But in this yep. case, she will know, and there's like nothing to go back mm-hmm. to, and there's like, yeah, there's like these like really great moments of like her going back, and like people like see her, and they're like, oh. Oh, you're not her because you're not dressed like. Oh, you're a proper lady, and she's like, "Oh God, I can't even go back." I'm not like it's not like she's not welcome yeah. there, but she can't go back to this. Yep. It's uh, it's kind of like it's a messed up thing. It sure um, is. Um. Oh yeah. Dog. Well, uh, a couple of my other n- notes from earlier. Uh. So yeah, there's like the uh, some king speechery going on in this. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, with marbles in the mouth. Uh, which has, comes with like like I think a fantastic bit where like she's like I swallowed one to which Higgins responds Don't worry there are plenty more, it's like mm-hmm. that, that that's fantastic. Yep. Um, and then yeah when they when uh, he de- he does the first test run with uh, with yeah. uh, uh, Doolittle and he takes her to his mother's and like his mother's is like go home like she's like doesn't yeah. like him she's like I'm, like, today's my like, like I don't care like, no I'm, yeah she's like, she's like this is the day you don't visit me yeah, go like, away yeah like, you leave a goose fuck off uh mm-hmm. so i thought that was cool it's like that's nice to see because usually it's always the overbearing mother like but he's mm-hmm. like actually got like the mother fixation um so yeah. yeah and that whole bit where he's like laying out like what what's going to happen and they explain and then like all these people from earlier on show up um the simpleton freddy and his like mm-hmm. mother and stuff like that they all show up and then you get that whole like play of like uh kind of like the gutter snipe way of thinking by way of high sure. lady speak and it's like uh it's a great little scene of just like the disconnect of like yeah you could learn how to talk all properly but if your ideas and like ability to like uh yeah. process information is still the same it's just going to come out and then no one's going to know what you're saying on either side mm-hmm. uh, so i think that's like pretty pretty snappy for like a 1912 play to be oh, throwing yeah. that stuff and stuff that that down because most movies don't even give a fuck about those types of things nowadays they just assume people wouldn't be smart enough to get it mm-hmm. um and then we get more training montages <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah yeah those yeah. are nice though no, I like oh yeah, I love, yeah i love yeah. it no, this, this movie is like snappy it's like mm-hmm. 90 minutes it doesn't overstay its welcome it just blasts through um mm-hmm. but then like yes yeah, so like uh i guess it all is building toward the bet which i guess like if we want to talk yeah. about it uh higgins bets pickering i can make her into like a proper lady and no one would know the difference and we get to that scene the big moment of this movie which i guess isn't even like a big thing in the play itself which is mm-hmm. interesting um and then like we get the disciple of higgins uh the mm-hmm. oh what's his name He's the monocle, and he's a ponce. Uh, we get the, uh, the Hungarian guy. Yeah, we get his 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 entrance, which I think yep. is like awesome. Like he's like swanning in. Um, yep. I think I was like reading like on a blog. It was like there's like uh, another like Criterion blog thing from like 2008 was writing an article, and they were describing it as like very like Scorsese like the way the camera like. <laughs> pans out and like tracks the shot and I'm like yeah yeah it's like that's probably why I was like that scene really stood out mm-hmm. to me um and then I just made the moat uh, the note here that this movie is just fucking savage uh it's just oh, like when, just, well, just this, how, the, just, how everyone's so mean well well after the party and everything's a success 
like because oh, yeah. you get you get the whole payoff and because like yeah, yeah what's great about like intro because like when you introduce like the disciple character like you're like oh, oh there's the tension like is he going to find it out and like i never was like yeah. really convinced i think the guy was like presented as like too much of an idiot like or kind of a yep. dope that he was like it was gonna be like oh, how does he screw up like how does he not pick up on her and then you get to see like you get the payoff mm-hmm. of like him like completely missing the boat and like it's like because at the end of the day this movie is kind of like supposed to be a comedy uh but it, i think like a lot of times this movie is like so mean and like leslie howard is so convincing as like yep. an asshole that it's like uh it elevates it and then yeah you get to like the the savagery of like when it comes down to <laughs> Doolittle and higgins like together and like just yeah. like how like mean Howard is like he like oh, yeah. just Higgins is just like he does not give a shit like cause you keep thinking oh he's gonna start falling for her and then the mm-hmm. opportunity is not gonna be there anymore but it doesn't play out quite like that and then you just get like how like what is she supposed to do now and he's like oh, I don't know because he's still above it all like he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> well, he's like I don't care yeah he hasn't fallen for the girl which is like kind of like yeah. more of like the trope if this was like a say a late 90s uh comedy <laughs> where it's like, oh, I, I think I'm really falling for her now. Um, it, it was a bet, yeah. But then I, but then I met you. It became too real. It came, became too real. Uh, so yeah, so we get like the whole kind of final bit where like she's like, well, fuck you, I'm gonna go hang out with Freddie, and like mm-hmm. Freddie is this, this dullard who's been waiting around for. Her. Um, there's like great scenes where like we're like she's like she's like kiss me, and he's like, oh, okay, and then like these cops come around, they're like, mm-hmm. were, you, were you annoying that young lady? <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's good um and then yeah you get like the kind of the final sequence of the movie where like it all is just laid out bare and um it's like it's, it's higgins versus uh do little the world and it's yep. and then i don't know I, I think the final sequences of this movie are like fantastic the higgins yep. walk down the street is awesome and you keep like mm-hmm. thinking i don't know i had me going i was like where does this end like is this yeah. the end is this going to end on this note like is this like the third man <laughs> where it's like unrequited or whatever yeah. and then it's like ah perfect and it's like i think my note here was higgins got played there i gotcha yeah and it works and i liked it <clears throat> apparently bernard shaw uh mm-hmm. said he like did not think at all that uh the two should ever get together because he's just like no it doesn't make any sense like because <laughs> he wrote the play and he's kind of right yeah. like you because like the way the higgins character is written it's like it doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. but at the same time he's also adapting pygmalion which is a story <laughs> about like the artist and his like sculpture like being together so it's kind of yeah. like funny that he was like so against it so i guess like he was not a fan of the like ending where they like fall in love or whatever like and i guess like mm-hmm. it, it it actually ended on the ambiguous ending before and like people complained and he like wrote in some like added on yeah. stuff to the play that like all right him her and freddie get together and they're happily ever after but that's yeah. also a decision because i think like freddie is not a, a simpleton as much in the play and in, for instance, My Fair Lady as he is here in Pygmalion. But I think mm-hmm. it works. Like for Pygmalion, like they're trying to make this like really like it's like kind of a like dark comedy and like he's just like a goofball, like a 1930s goofball in a 30s movie. Um, mm-hmm. But like, yeah. So I mean, it works great. Like you don't want to see her with Freddie because he's like he's a dummy. Like she's yeah. she seems smart and like sophisticated and on it now that she's like learned about the world and Higgins wants that challenge and like that's like when he gets like really into her where she's like where she becomes the dominating mother woman to him and he's like yes <laughs> this is what I signed up for because <laughs> he's a weirdo but a great weirdo oh, oh he's a weirdo all right yeah um yeah, yeah. yeah so hey, this is a good movie yeah this movie's great uh I, mm-hmm. I, i'm kind of bummed out because i feel like uh like what happens with some of these obscure movies is people don't wind up watching or like listening yeah. to the episodes or because they're good don't care about that movie and you're like no that's the point of this whole thing is to find out yeah. what movies are good and this one's absolutely like i think it's one of the like absolutely definitely mm-hmm. one of the better movies that we've watched uh especially blindly um oh I think shit yeah good um yeah so hey RJ, uh i yeah. also watched my fair lady for the very first time uh can i tell you uh, really quickly before you start can i tell you my my fair lady s- story absolutely saturday night uh as uh, i talked about earlier in the uh, preamble uh this was uh andy week because uh, my girlfriend loves rom-coms she loves makeover movies uh so i was like she watched pygmalion with me she watched she's all that pretty woman and uh i was like so there's uh this my fair lady i was like uh, jared said it won best picture 
I guess. I was like, you want to watch this with me? And she's like, yeah, sure. I was like, it's three hours long. She's like, oh, well, if it's good, we'll watch it. Uh, I was like, okay. So we ordered pizza. We got tucked in, man. Saturday night, we were going to watch My Fair Lady. And it starts, and it's a musical. And Andrea just stood up. She's, she went, nah, nah. She just left. So uh, we didn't watch My Fair Lady. Uh, in her words, I don't play that musical shit. Really? She didn't say that, actually. She was just like, I don't like musicals. I'm not going to watch this That's fucking That's interesting. Thing. And I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, she didn't like La La Land either because she thought it was just, she doesn't like musicals. Interesting. So, so anyways, uh, we were going to watch this with you. Uh, we were going to do it, but uh, we took the uh, the harder turn. We did those uh, 80s, 90s ones, and you, you had to do this. So anyways, well, tell me about My Fair Lady. That's okay. Um, I took the L on this because uh, yeah. I, I watched My Fair Lady. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie is directed by Gray Cooker or George mm-hmm. Cooker. George Cooker. Uh, and yeah, it won Best Picture. Uh, yeah. So I'm really glad I watched Pygmalion first because yeah. like the movie is so great and it lays out the story so well. Because mm-hmm. when you watch My Fair Lady, it's the same movie, RJ, but it's three hours long. It takes of musicals? It takes not even like the musical bits are like there's not that many like sequences like mm-hmm. that to pad it out. But no, they take the exact same story, like ex- the same dialogue and exchanges and stuff like that, but they double it. And uh, this, so that made me mad uh, because yeah. when you've done it, when the material's done so well and yeah. uh, you've seen it like done like, man, I can't imagine this being any better. And then you do it like subparly <laughs> in my opinion. Like I, I think this movie sucks kind of like, I, I think it's a waste of time. Um, I People watch, watch Pygmalion instead. Like, what does it have going for it? So it's got Audrey Hepburn, mm-hmm. which I think adds to its popularity. Um, so my fair lady story I'll throw out there is apparently this is like my mom's like favorite movie. Uh, or it's the movie, that, it's, it's the movie that my mom will say she like. Oh, that's my favorite movie. But I yeah. doubt she's probably watched it in forty years. Like she like. Yeah, uh, I see. Because like, I I wound up watching uh the like Warner Brothers two disc special edition. I bought her for Christmas and mm-hmm. I bought it like probably over 10 years ago 15 yeah. years ago and it, like when i like got it from the house uh to like watch it like a couple years ago for like when i was watching best Pi- winner best picture winners but i never got it to it it was still sealed so like my mom was like not watch this movie like forever like and so i was like well, well so i was going in to this being like okay well let's just see what this is like i kind of like ha- have an expectation of what this is it pretty well is that uh it's just yeah. like it's just a padded out version of the same movie um, mm-hmm. with Audrey Hepburn who were told is like oh look at this like bum girl <laughs> but you're like like <laughs> she doesn't look like at all like on a yeah. like <laughs> like a physical level like somebody that's like malnourished and coming from mm-hmm. like the like the gutters of England like she looks like pretty like she looks like Audrey Hepburn wearing like yeah. like crappy clothes even like even the crappy clothes are like super well designed because you know it's a big yeah produ- it's a big production of a movie um Rex Harrison uh Doc, Dr. Doolittle, uh, mm-hmm. he plays uh, Higgins, and he sucks in the sense that he is, like, so obviously not a mean person. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, like, every line, because he's doing all the same dialogue as Higgins, right? Like, mm-hmm. every, like, he's supposed to be, like, a dick, but, like, you're not, I'm never convinced that he is, like, he feels this way. Like, he's just, like, smiling. He's, like, almost like a kindly grandpa who's, like, he doesn't realize he's a sweet person. He's, mm-hmm. where's, like, Man, uh, Leslie Howard, like you were just like this man just doesn't care. Like it's, it's, he's because that's yeah. how good that performance is. And Rex Harrison is just like, oh, I'm a smiling grandpa. I'm going to sing a song about how I'm a bachelor and women are inferior. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, good stuff. okay, this is just like the like, I don't know. You look through those like '60s Best Picture winners, and they're like, there's so many fucking musicals. Uh, one of which I did watch for the uh, Criterion Creeps back when we watched. Uh, uh, Great Expectations and Oliver Twist. I watched oh. Oliver, and that movie had like Oliver Reed at least, uh, yeah. but this did not have Oliver Reed. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just really long, and uh, there's like one dance number that is like kind of like where the iconic My Fair Lady costume comes from. The like, the, if every poster has it, like the big feather hat, like when she, and it's like the scene that's like at in Pygmalion at his mother's house, but it's yeah. played out at like the horse track 
And it's like, a, like the costumes and look of it are like really amazing. Like that is like one thing you like, I will knock not knock this movie for is like the lavish like production values of this movie. Like it looks amazing. The house is like <laughs> has this ridiculous wallpapers and just like yeah, it looks like a it's a shot in seventy millimeter Panavision. So it looks really great. This movie would probably be yeah. like better, obviously, I think, to watch in a theater than like at home. Uh, but it's still way too long. I don't really care about any of the songs because, uh, like Andrea, I guess I'm not like a musical man. Um, I thought they called you the music man in high school. Is that for <laughs> different reasons? Uh, I can't imagine what those reasons would be. Um, but anyway, so yeah, my fair lady, don't watch it. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe I, so I would not recommend it. Just watch Pygmalion. It's yeah. just, so, it's so much better. Should I talk about my Pygmalion remake? Uh, oh, one more thing. So the other, the killer, the one that made me mad with my friend oh, lady. Yeah. So like the last, like the last, there's an hour left in the movie and they've done the big, like, uh, like thing where the they ball? go, they go to the ball and everyone, everyone goes back and starts celebrating how great it was. And that's like, there's still an <laughs> yeah. hour to go in the movie. And I'm like, what the fuck did they, what can they accomplish in an hour that they could do like that other, in the other movie, it's like 20 yeah. minutes. This is an hour. Like there, and nothing justifies it. It never gets better. It's never like the final sequence with like Rex Harrison and Audrey Hepburn doing the same thing that we just saw in the previous movie, which, which is so good and savage. This is like, they're all like, Oh, we're so cute. This is so charming. Um, like I'd say like my yeah. fair lady maybe is like more accurate to maybe the plays that are like, going for like this is a comedy and you're supposed to be a little bit like happier watching it not like drawn Mm -hmm. into this like intense brutal drama that's playing out um actually another thing i'll throw out there too is like when i was watching pygmalion uh chanel was kind of like coming in and out of the like room doing some other stuff but she sat down and committed to the last like 15 20 minutes of the movie because she was totally drawn in to just the Mm -hmm. dialogue like she was just like wow this is like so good like it's like raw yeah i can't believe it like this is great um and like she also was a big fan of mother which had like very similar Mm -hmm. convincing character dynamics so right so great so yeah final thing about my fair lady the the whole sequence that we just seen with uh, leslie howard walking down the street so well done there's no Mm -hmm. fucking singing there's no like bombasticness him talking out loud yeah. nothing it's just him walking with like like determination this is rex harrison talk singing out his feelings through this final walk oh it's, yeah it's such fucking bullshit it's just like god damn this movie i hate it um and it's probably because i've seen i saw pygmalion beforehand maybe but like i would i probably wouldn't be crazy about my fair lady either um it's yeah. definitely on the weaker side of uh best picture winners that i've watched well um it sounds bad yeah, it's not worth the time. Uh, yeah, I don't like musicals. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't have much else to say. I was gonna look up what else. Uh, what else was nominated for best picture? Oh, go for it. Uh, I'll read through during that year. Who hates Pygmalion? Get on it, girl. Alrighty. So Jeff King, he gave this mo- Pygmalion one star. Is it possible to adapt Shaw's work, Pygmalion, for the screen in any way that doesn't come off as insulting to the modern ear? I realize <laughs> that that's the entire premise of Higgins' work toward Eliza, but at some point it just becomes tiresome. I've seen the My Fair Lady adaptation that won awards 30 years later, but that at least had musical numbers to liven it up. This is a 90-ish minutes of one character berating and insulting another, and that's insulted character somehow coming around to love the one assailing her verbally. It's sad tone deaf to someone watching in the 21st century and honestly doll here's hoping this never gets adapted again that seems a little bit drastic like <laughs> like this guy's got some real fucking problems with he, this eh? he, he he had some hard feelings real feelings about it he there's no he, way you could he, feel that like he, he didn't like it and so no one else does um nathan uh, gave this movie one and a half star I really, yeah. really hate this play movie, and I know it's satire, but it still makes me incredibly uncomfortable, and I loathe every bloody second of it, but at least it doesn't have songs. Intellectually, I can sense its value, but something about it goes all over me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't <laughs> want to spend time with this smug asshole, whether the film is making fun of him or not. Wendy Hiller is marvelous, though. Uh, the end of the film actually makes matters worse since it refuses Eliza even sufficient integrity to the exit the life of her oppressor. Not that Shaw's humor ever seems fair to her as a person, sympathetic or not. 
Ugh, just can't take it. Sorry. Guess I haven't matured mm-hmm. since senior year after all. Edit. Lowest rating for this on Letterboxd. My wiring is clearly fucked. That's had some refreshing uh, self-awareness. Uh, yeah. From, yeah, it's nice. Um, <clears throat> do you have any other hate? I, 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 I got one more, and then you can Kay. tell me uh, the competition for My Fair Lady. Oh, okay. 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 So Coco gave this two stars. Uh, the twin devils Leslie Howard and Anthony Asquith pervert and misconstrue Shaw's indictment of Britain's rigid hierarchical structures and advocacy for female independence. Remember, Shut this off. was a time before women's suffrage. Uh, what? Yeah, wow. Well, <sighs> through the use of countless tacked on small scenes, sappy musical arrangements, looks, glances, camera angles, and that abomination of an ending, the narrative ultimately metamorphoses into a saccharine love affair and not about a creepy old asshole breeding a penniless girl to become the ultimate obedient waifu as it was in the original play (laughs) to so utterly miss the point of the original work has triggered me beyond belief. This could all have been forgiven if the comedic bits were delivered competently, but that which was awfully funny in print has become tediously defined. Alas! (laughs) I don't like the way that person talks. Yeah. Uh, you want to you want to hear some rage here? You want to hear some real bullshit? Go for it. About the the thirty seventh Academy Awards. <laughs> uh, so I just want to point out Best Actress. Apparently Audrey Hepburn wasn't even nominated, uh, but Julie Andrews of Mary Poppins won. So uh, mm-hmm. apparently My Fair Lady wasn't even the best musical that came that came out that year because Mary Poppins came out, which I believe is better. Um, I don't know. Uh, other Best Picture nominees. Uh, were Mary Poppins, mm-hmm. uh, Beckett, Zorba the Greek, uh, which I've heard of, I've never seen. And get this, Jarrett, a movie that was beaten by My Fair Lady, which was nominated for Best Picture, directed by Mr. Stanley Kubrick, <laughs> Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, well, which also, he lost Best Picture to the My Fair Lady director, and... This one is the real fucking thing here. Uh, Peter Sellers was nominated for Best Actor for Dr. Strangelove. He did not win. He lost to your personal friend, Rex Harrison. Oh. So, uh, so Dr. Strangelove was nominated for like everything. And it's just like, I, it doesn't look like it won anything. I don't oh. Anyways, uh, yeah, your buddy Rex Harrison oh. beat Peter Sellers. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's not Rex Harrison's fault. Uh, yeah. Well, kind of is because he played it that way, but it fit with mm-hmm. the rest of the movie, which is also all. Oh, so, you know what, though? Audrey Hepburn deserved to lose because she's like not even that good in the movie either. Oh, like, okay. I, 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 I was just. I, I yeah. didn't really get into her too much because like there's just other elements of the whole production I don't like. But yeah, she's yeah. like, I might know it was like, yeah, she's just too broad and like too comedy for my taste. Uh, sure. It just, yeah, it doesn't quite fit. Like she makes these really wacky sounds. It works in charade. But, and also okay. the other yeah. thing too, is like, they never really place like how old she's supposed to be in this movie. Um, but she was 62. like, she, well, she's like in her thirties at this point, but she always like, oh, she's, okay. she looks like she's always like 22 kind of thing. Like she was yeah. like, quite young. Um, but anyway, yeah. And then it's like a couple of years later, Audrey Hepburn's like not in anything ever again. <laughs> kind of like or, what's going to happen very to you. little like me. Oh. Yep. When I'm done. Hey, I watched pretty woman. Hey, talk about that. Richard Gere isn't a good actor. He's not a good actor. No, I don't think so. Does he just, I'm not convinced. Now, does he just play himself in movies? Is that the issue? No, I think he's just bad. Uh, Pretty Woman, he's just really boring and uninterested. Uh, I was going to say, I've seen this before as a little kid. Not a little kid, but I used to see parts of it on TV. Just, you know, uh, I didn't realize how much sex was in this movie. Dirty hooker sex. Uh, (laughs) There's a blowjob scene and there is banging on a piano, which seemed pretty, pretty raw. Um, uh, As I mentioned before, uh, Julia Roberts doesn't change at all. I think the audience changes their viewpoint that falling in love with a hooker is okay and then uh george costanza comes in and uh punches her in the head 
and tries to rape her, and that's pretty fucking crazy. And I don't remember that scene as a kid. I don't. Th- maybe uh, they, I don't think that think that scene might have gotten cut in the TV version. Uh, oh, in the uh, the TBS version, they cut yeah. out when uh, George from Seinfeld uh, punches the hooker and tries to rape her. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Anyways, that's it. Pretty Woman is. Uh, it sounds like it was better than My Fair Lady. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> It was, like, I, I mean, I've never seen it. I've fine. never, I've never seen it. Um, you never seen Pretty Woman? No, I like Roy Orbison. Fuck, you're a monster. Yeah, he he has a audio appearance. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Anyways, um, that's oh, all hey, I wanted to about, say. I guess like one thing with Pygmalion we didn't really touch on is Pimp Dad, Miss Mister Doolittle. Yeah, they uh, they uh, they didn't really talk about that. I was gonna say in Pretty Woman they really gloss over how bad it would be to be a hooker because mm. the one girl's like, "Oh, we should get a pimp." And he's like, mm, "He bur- he threw out all my stuff when I said I wasn't gonna have him as a pimp anymore." And it's like, I don't think that's what happened. Oh, we, we, that's fun. I just was. I'm just skimming through. Uh, Wilfred Lawson, who played uh, um, Mr. Doolittle in Pygmalion, he played yep. an uncredited old soldier in 1964's Academy Award nominated Best Picture, Beckett. What a okay hell of a well, thing. There you go. Um, yep, and Beckett's actually a pretty good movie too. That like I I've believe seen, it. I, I've seen it, but it's been a while. Uh, and actually, we'll be mm-hmm. seeing uh, Wendy Hiller because she's going to be showing up uh, very in a few weeks when we get to the uh, Powell Pressburger doubleheader. She's in. I know where I'm going. I don't really know any of the things that you were talking about the last couple of minutes, so I'm just gonna oh. I'm gonna say yes, yes, yes. You're right. Exquisite. Yeah, nice. I'm just wondering if we'll see Leslie Howard in anything again in our. Uh... I hope so. I don't think we do though. Is Gone with the Wind in the uh, laser oh, disc? No, fuck. He died in '43. Uh oh. What did he die yeah. of? Polio. Uh, World War Two. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, casualty of war. There you go. So he uh, went and fought. I think is the my the gem. Oh, that sucks. It's too bad. Yeah. Yep, he was, too bad. Was, was on board flight 777 of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines uh, with four crew members and 12 other passengers on a regular flight from Bristol to Lisbon when it was shot down by German fire planes. So, there you go. Boo earns. Happens to the best of us. Yep. Well, not the ones that just stay home, hopefully. Uh, hey, you think you're safe at home. You wait. <laughs> I know. You wait. Hopefully. I'm safe. Yeah. But nothing's right. for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Pygmalion's awesome. People should absolutely watch it. It's really good. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yep. Uh, after the break, I'm going to sell RJ to a professor. The professor tells me that he's going to turn him into a proper lady. Fucking better men have tried, buddy. Mm-hmm. Just think about how smart you're going to sound in six months. <sighs> Bollocks. Some might even say that the Criterion Creeps project is a Pygmalion tale. Mm, for you, maybe. <laughs> Bringing you down to earth, baby. Mm-hmm. It's really taking on that higher 